Whoever rejects this call has rejected Muhammad and has rejected all of Islam. Not just metaphorically, not just by rejecting a successor of Muhammad, but by rejecting Muhammad in person, him as an individual. The 12th Imam Muhammad ibn Hassan al-Askari is Rasulullah and he is here today and it is by his command that we have, we have come out to call the people. Uh, to them. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad alayhim wa al-mahdina wa salam taslima assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh my dear brother Dr. Ali Al-Ghurifi wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh uh, thank you for joining me here today شرف كبير ان اكون معك وصلنا نورت المكان وشرفتنا واشكرك وجزاك الله خير انه نورك وصلنا دكتور علي today we want to talk about a, uh, an important topic uh, it might seem at first a little bit complex but it's actually quite simple uh, it's one of the central uh, things the core beliefs of our da'wah and uh, that is the multiplicity of the imam of the the multiplicity of the mahdis Okay, and that is the existence of more than one person that bears the title Mahdi. Um, I think in Islam, for the most part, uh, most people up until uh, recent years have considered that uh, there is going to be one Imam Mahdi who will appear in the end times and he will appear simultaneously with Jesus Christ. They'll free the they'll free the world. They'll fight against the Antichrist, mm. and this is the basics of what they knew. But they didn't have this uh, idea that, or or it wasn't a common belief. Let's put it that way, uh, that there were uh, twelve Mahdi's who who would succeed Imam al Mahdi. Mm. And uh, to explain it briefly, uh, we have uh, God sending in every day and age a vice chair, uh, starting with Adam, who's the first caliph, the first representative, and going all the way down until uh, the current day and age. The narrations of the Ahl Bayt are extremely clear mm -hmm. that God cannot leave the earth without a vice chair or without a representative. Um, or else people would would have the excuse on the day of judgment to say we didn't know what the truth is. So there has to be a custodian, a guardian who guards the faith and guides people to the truth for every day and age. There has to be um, a door to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, when God sent down Adam and the prophets uh, leading up to the Prophet Muhammad, the final of them all, um, each and every one of those prophets, uh, God had blown in them something of his light, something mm -hmm. of the veil, which mm -hmm. we clarified in the last episode, mm -hmm. that the veil is the Ahl Kisa So a part of their spirit was in each and every one of the um, uh, the prophets and the messengers. And that's why uh, some narrations state that the initial prostration that the angels made to Adam was not to Adam himself, but rather to Muhammad or other narrations state to Ali, who was um, in the loins of Adam. And it is because of that spirit. That spirit is from the Ahl Kisa alayhi salam. And uh, none of the prophets or messengers uh, were, were able to fully implement the jurisprudence and the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, on the earth because of Satan and because of the armies of, of darknesses. So having a part of the spirit was insufficient mm. and that required uh, that uh, there would be a manifestation, a dissension, an appearance of the veil itself. And we spoke about how uh, Jesus represented the first appearance uh, or rise of God in creation. And that's why he's mentioned uh, by that title, the rise of God in Sa'ir, uh, in the du'as and the narrations of the Ahl Bayt And he was the first of the 
perfect, complete words uh, of God. And uh, because he made this appearance and his light was so bright, all of darkness fought against him mm. and they managed to uh, have him arrested and uh, they were going to crucify him and he was crucified in the apparent and uh, Jesus was caused to die and his soul was taken up uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that necessitated that he send a second paraclete, a second um, comforter, a second uh, appearance uh, of the veil in creation and that second appearance was the um, appearance of God which was Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi who represented the, the perfect mm -hmm. uh, manifestation of the divine qualities and names a perfect representation of God the perfect caliph of Allah in creation when Rasulullah came, uh, he had a great deal of success. Uh, he was able to spread his message and uh, by the end of his life, uh, he had uh, basically united all of the Arab tribes that were in the region mm -hmm. under Islam and there were tens of thousands of followers and Islam uh, expanded at an extremely uh, fast rate uh, after that. Uh, and then we came to the matter of the successorship and we spoke about how because the prophets and the messengers uh, from Adam all the way to the Prophet mm -hmm. Muhammad, they were incapable of uh, basically carrying the divine message fully uh, before Jesus and Muhammad. Mm -hmm. uh, they certainly weren't capable of doing it directly after the Prophet Muhammad because all of the forces of darknesses had gathered to destroy Islam and wipe it off of the face of the earth. And this is why the Ben al-Abbas and the, uh, the Ben al-Umayyah uh, killed and poisoned and imprisoned each and every one of the successors of the Prophet Muhammad And they slaughtered al Hussein. and why the narrations state that if it wasn't for the fact that al Hussein was sacrificed and this was like a wake-up call for the Muslim nation, all of Islam would have been destroyed and nothing of it would have existed uh, today. So obviously Iblis sought to destroy it and it was a very vicious fight. The only people that were capable during this time of great darkness to succeed the Prophet Muhammad were those who were also uh, clean of every sin, those who were perfected, and those individuals were the people of the cloak. Uh, Fatima Ali al Hassan al Hussein. Of course, Fatima Ali Salam was not a successor of the Prophet Muhammad, but she was a member of the Ahl Kisa. And the hadith of the cloak is when the Prophet Muhammad went underneath the cloak and Fatima went under it, Ali went under it, Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, went under it, and Hassan and Hussein salam, went under it, and then Gabriel, who is Jesus, also went under it. And God uh, brought down the verse from the Quran in Surah 33, Ayah 33. Uh, in which he says, uh, Verily God wants to remove all impurities from you, O people of the house, and to purify you a thorough purification. So those successors of Muhammad and Muhammad himself were thoroughly purified uh, from any impurities, and mm -hmm. they were the only ones whom were capable of succeeding Muhammad. And the successors of Muhammad, according to the narrations of the Ahl Bayt, are higher than and better than all the other prophets and the messengers that came uh, before. And so there we have it. We have then the Prophet Muhammad leaving a will, and in that will he states that his successors are 12 Imams, and then after that are 12 Mahdis. Mm. And the uh, followers of the Ahl Bayt they believe that the, there's actually 14 infallibles, 14 individuals who are thoroughly purified from all impurities. That this verse in Surah 33, um, a at 33, verse 33, is pertaining not just to the people of the cloak, but also the nine imams that follow from the loins of Imam al-Hussein mm. 
but they weren't mm -hmm. obviously under the cloak because at that point when that incident took place, they weren't born yet. Uh, but the Shia think that it's an extension because they're there and they were in the loins, so it extends. Uh, perhaps that's true, but in reality, the, the, the truth of the matter uh, is that um, the 12 Imams that came, they were actually reincarnations and reappearances of the same members of the mm -hmm. Ahlul Kisat. They came multiple times. Uh, first, we'll list off the names of the 12 Imams for all of those, um, you know, who uh, are, are unfamiliar with their names. You have after the Prophet Muhammad, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib. After him, you have his son, Al-Hassan. After him, you have his brother, al Hussein, son of Ali. And then you have nine Imams that come from the seed of al Hussein, mm. starting with Ali Zayn al-Abideen, and then you have Muhammad al-Bakr, and then you have Jafar al-Sadiq, and then you have Musa Qasim, and then you have Ali al-Rida, and then you have Muhammad al-Jawad, and then you have Ali al-Hadi, and then you have Al-Hassan al-Askari, and then you have Muhammad al-Mahdi. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically every single time that one of the Imams incarnates, as you can see many of them, several of them, uh, their name is Muhammad and mm -hmm. several of them, their name is Ali. Every Imam whose name was Muhammad was a reincarnation and reappearance of Muhammad Rasulullah. Muhammad Rasulullah had never incarnated in this world before his incarnation as the Prophet Muhammad. And after the Prophet Muhammad, he reappears as several of the Imams. So he comes back as who? As Muhammad al-Bakr, after Rasulullah. So from the 14 infallibles, he is Rasulullah. He's also uh, Muhammad al-Bakr. He's also Muhammad al-Jawad. And he's also Muhammad al-Mahdi, the, uh, the Imam Mahdi, the 12th Imam, mm -hmm. that is a reincarnation and a reappearance of Rasulullah. So Muhammad ibn Hassan al-Askari salam, he actually has the soul of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And uh, that's why looking at him is like looking at the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi And that's why some narrations mention that praying behind him is like praying behind Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi because he is Rasulullah. Okay. Uh, yes. Um, and he's the one who sends forward the Mahdi's, and they're named after him because he now serves as uh, God in creation, and he sends forward uh, the messengers. So Rasulullah Muhammad, he sends forward the Imams and the Mahdi's, mm -hmm. and Imam al-Mahdi, who is Rasulullah Muhammad, sends forward uh, the Mahdi's and serves for them as as uh, you know their Imam and their guide and their enforcer and the person who sends them and uh, is delegated the affairs of creation. Then you have Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. He appears as the first Imam, mm -hmm. and then he appears once again as Ali Zayn al-Abideen, and then he appears once again as Ali al-Rida, and then he appears once again as Imam Ali al-Hadi. Mm -hmm. So there are four appearances of Ali ibn Abi Talib, four appearances of Muhammad in the 14 infallible. Uh, you have Imam al-Hassan, uh, he appears as uh, Imam al-Hassan al-Askari and he also has an incarnation as uh, Ja'far al-Sadiq no. And then you have Imam al Hussein mm. who uh, appears once again as Musa Qasim, mm. and then he appears finally um, in as the first of the Mahdi's, and that is as Ahmed al Hassan al Yeah, it's not the Salam. Sura Juddin, I mean, 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 I وهنا انا بالصادق يعني حضرتك صورت انه التصوير الرائع حقيقه يتناسب مع القران وفضلنا الانبياء بعضهم على بعض والظاهر انه يعني قبل محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم او قبل عيسى كان التكامل في الانبياء بدرجه اقل واذا كان حجم الظلمه اللي تواجههم كانت اقل او تتناسب مع حجم النور اللي قدروا يوصلوا لها وقدروا يوصلوا لها هؤلاء الأنبياء ولكن في زمن محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم كان تكامل جدا كبير ولكن الظلمة كانت جدا 
في نفس الوقت متوازية مع هذا النور اللي عند محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم ف وهو النبي الخاتم الذي سيظهر الله جينا على ال... على ال... على الارض اكزاكتلي exactly. صوره جميله and so now we have the the successors of Muhammad the Ahlul Kisa mm-hmm. reappearing as the 12 imams okay so then the question arises okay well what happens after the 12th imam you know is it judgment day does creation end well um, the answer is no creation continues um, the the qiyamah does not happen uh, right after the uh, 12th imam this uh, mankind does not go extinct and if mankind does not go extinct then the people questioned they they asked the imams um, you know over the centuries they said okay well then who comes after the 12th imam you guys said that god never leaves the earth without a hajja god never leaves the earth without a representative so if the reason for the 12 imams coming was to preserve the religion who preserves the religion after the 12th imam who preserves the religion after imam al-mahdi and the answer came in the narrations that those who would succeed and rule after the 12th imam would be a group of our shia this was the answer a group of our shia so now we know that a group of our shia or a group of our 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 staunch supporters of great followers a group of our disciples uh, would follow uh, the 12th imam and there was further clarification in other narrations uh, in which mentioned the coming of individuals who were titled Mahdi's and the Mahdi's they appear in narrations that there will succeed the uh, the Imam al-Mahdi uh, 12 Mahdi's and it also appeared in the uh, the holy will of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, where on his deathbed he says that after him will be 12 Imams and then after that will be uh, 12 Mahdi's so uh, now we know that a group of the Shia of the Ahl al-Bayt would, would return as uh, or succeed the 12th Imam so if the 12 uh, the 12 Imams were reincarnations of the people of the cloak or the Ahlul Kisa, then who are these 12 Mahdi's who appear after uh, the 12 Imams? Mm-hmm. And the, the answer comes really, uh, and, and we can find clues to, to this in the hadith of the Ahl Bayt as well as in the Quran. So when we look up in the Quran, the word Shia, we see that it appears once in the Quran. It appears several times, but it appears once in the Quran in the verse that uh, states, and verily from his Shia is Abraham. And so we know now that Shia, one of the Shia, is Abraham. Okay. And we know also uh, in the hadith of the Ahl Bayt that the Shia of the Ahl Bayt are the prophets and the messengers. Mm-hmm. Now, this is stated uh, very clearly. Um, and that they're the ones whom were the closest supporters of them. And Ali ibn Abi Talib, uh, in some narrations, he's the one who judges between them, you know, and he's the one who made several appearances. Uh, for them and Muhammad Rasulullah is the uh, imam of them when they were praying on the night journey and uh, so the the imam of the prophets and the messengers is Muhammad and the family of Muhammad and the followers of the Shia of Muhammad and the family of Muhammad in the first degree are the prophets and the messengers right does that make sense yeah. Okay, Mm. so then what takes place with the 12 Mahdi's is that there is a a reappearance of the Ahl Kisa. It necessitates that they return again as Mahdi's, Mm. but they don't appear as Mahdi's multiple times, but rather just one time. Mm. So you have first Al Hussein reappearing he's already appeared in the imams as imam al hussein and he's already appeared as musa qazim mm. and we said that he appears as the first of the mahdi's ahmed al hassan why does he appear as the first of the mahdi's and is there proof for this there is the narrations from the ahl bayt also state while they state that 
Imam Mahdi would be succeeded by uh, 12, um, uh, 12 Mahdis, it also states in the narrations that the one who would wash Imam Mahdi when he dies mm -hmm. and bury Imam Mahdi and pray over him mm -hmm. and succeed him would be al Hussein. He would be the first of those souls that return uh, in this day and age uh, when all of the souls return because the narration state that in the time of Imam al-Mahdi mm -hmm. all of the souls uh, will return. And so Imam al Hussein serves as the first of the Mahdi's and the successor of Rasulullah Muhammad as the 12th Imam. Okay, so then if al Hussein returns back as a Mahdi, mm -hmm. does uh, Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa does Ali ibn Abi Talib, does al Hassan uh, return also as Mahdi's? And yes, they do. We have Rasulullah Muhammad. He appears once again as the final of the Mahdi's, the last of the Mahdi's, mm -hmm. the twelfth Mahdi. And you have uh, Al Hassan uh, appearing once again as the eleventh Mahdi, mm -hmm. uh, and he's directly before uh, the twelfth Mahdi. And you have also uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib. Uh, reappearing again as one of the Mahdi's as the 10th Mahdi. Uh, so you have the Mahdi's, they're 12, they start off with Imam al Hussein mm -hmm. and then they end with the 10th and the 11th and the 12th, which is Ali ibn Abi Talib, succeeded by uh, Imam al Hassan, succeeded by uh, Rasulullah Muhammad. So then what happens to the, the rest of the Mahdi's? Who are these individuals if they're not uh, reincarnations of the members of the cloak? Get this. So uh, the door to elevation is always open. And we spoke before in an episode when we were talking about the different ranks that individuals can climb and rise in. And we spoke about uh, the fact that you know, a person can r rise in degree until he's a prophet messenger. And then the degree after that is istifa, where they're chosen. So what is the degree of the istifa that they're chosen from the prophets and the messengers? And we said that Imam al-Sadiq said that the degree mm -hmm. after that would be that they are from the Ahl Bayt. They're from the Zurriya. They're from the people of the house. They elevated that degree to that degree like Salman, where Salman was, it was said about him that he is from us, the Ahl Bayt. Mm -hmm. And so the same thing takes place here. Now what takes place is that Rasulullah Muhammad resends all of the Shia, the best of the Shia, as caliphs to succeed one another uh, as vice gerents in the land. He resends those prophets and messengers, mm -hmm. except this time he enforces them by the Ahl Kisa appearing amongst them. Does that make sense? Make very sense. Yeah. So now, now the prophets they appeared as uh, first they were normal people. They mm -hmm. believed in their dreams. They became prophets. The mm -hmm. best of them were chosen to be from the three one three messengers. Uh, the best of them became ulil hazm prophets. Those ulil hazm prophets. Where can they go after that? They can only be from the Ahl Bayt sure. alayhi salam. And so you see those, those uh, Ulil Azm prophets all incarnating as Mahdi's. So you have Jesus who's in Ulil Azm and also he's a member of the Ahl Kisa. He appears as the ninth Mahdi. Mm. Okay? And then you have Noah who mm. is one of the, yeah, one of the Ulil Azm messengers. He appears as the eighth Mahdi. And then you have, uh, for example, uh, you have uh, Abraham, and he appears as the sixth Mahdi. And you have Moses, he appears as the third Mahdi. And then you have also a, a companion of a covenant, uh, although he failed in his first covenant in the sense that uh, he didn't have enough determination to be an Ulil Azm prophet, but still because he was a bearer of a covenant, and that is Adam, he reappears also and comes back as one of the uh, Mahdi's. 
And so now, how many do we have? We said we have Rasulullah as a Mahdi, mm-hmm. we have Al Hassan as a Mahdi, we have Al Hussein as a Mahdi, we have mm-hmm. Ali ibn Abi Talib as a Mahdi, and we have the Ulil Azm messengers mm-hmm. uh, plus the covenant uh, prophets. So you have Adam as a Mahdi, Noah as a Mahdi, Abraham uh, as a Mahdi, mm-hmm. uh, you have Moses as a Mahdi, and you have Jesus as a Mahdi. And then that leaves only uh, three more uh, empty slots uh, within the uh, t- uh, within the Mahdi's. Who do these belong to? They belong to the next three uh, closest prophets that had reached the highest degree that could have been from the Ulil Azm but weren't. Um, they end up for certain deeds that they have being selected, and they return as three members of those. Uh, 12 Mahdi's. Mm-hmm. One of them is the Prophet Ismail alayhi oh. And another one of them is the uh, Prophet Aaron alayhi mm-hmm. And the last one is Prophet Yusuf alayhi yes. All of those make up the 12 Mahdi's. yeah, it's amazing. Amazing. And after the twelve Mahdi's, uh, the, it continues. It continues. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there comes more successors after that. Mm-hmm. The total number of successors mm-hmm. after Imam Al Mahdi uh, are twelve thousand, mm-hmm. and uh, they rule for uh, many, many years. And that's why some narrations say that the rule of Ali ibn Abi Talib is like forty thousand years, mm-hmm. um, because of. Uh, that fact. And so uh, pretty much almost um, all of the best of the 124,000 mm-hmm. uh, prophets and messengers, uh, from the from the 124,000 prophets and messengers, the best 12,000 mm-hmm. of them, uh, uh, and, not, and not just them, but also from the Ahl Kisa, so a little bit less than 12,000 from the uh, 124,000 prophets and messengers, end up returning as uh, vicegerents that are succeeding one another in the land. So the verse from the Quran which says, uh, This verse, though, uh, and we want to grant our blessings upon those who are oppressed uh, mm. in the land and to make them imams and to make them the inheritors. Mm. This verse now, it applies and it's already been said by the Ahl Bayt that this is about uh, the prophets and the messengers and the Ahl Bayt. Mm. Now the prophets and the messengers who were oppressed in the land, they get to come back and to actually rule in the divine just state as successors uh, to Imam al-Mahdi salam, and also become from the Ahl Bayt and to rise a further uh, degree closer uh, mm-hmm. to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to work side by side uh, with the uh, Imams and the uh, people of the house and, uh, and return. SubhanAllah. يعني هذا رحمة رب العالمين أيضا بالأنبياء السابقين إنه أعطاهم أيضا تبقى الفرصة وأعطاهم الفرصة إنه يرتقون حتى بعد يعني كراتهم السابقة إنه يصلون إلى مرحلة الإمام الإمامة وهذا في الشيء جدا عظيم. Exactly. So they all reach that next rank which is the rank of imamat and the rank of being from the people of the house and the uh, rank that is, you know, beyond pretty much like even an Ulil Azm uh, prophet. Uh, so uh, it is uh, quite incredible, and it is from the, um, the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So let's let's uh, you know name the Mahdi's uh, mm. one by one, uh, yeah. so that way um, they can be arranged uh, in the minds uh, of the people, and people know because they'll ask for sure. Okay, so what are the full arrangement? We've mentioned a couple of them, but let's arrange them again. Yeah. Uh, from the top till the bottom. Mm. So first, there is the 12th Imam, mm. Imam al-Mahdi, and mm. he is Rasulullah Muhammad 
Peace and blessings be upon him and his family. He is alive in this day and age. Mm -hmm. Muhammad has reappeared. Whoever rejects this call has rejected Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi and has rejected all of Islam. Not just metaphorically, not just by rejecting a successor of Muhammad, but by rejecting Muhammad in person, him as an individual. The 12th mm -hmm. Imam Muhammad ibn Hassan al-Askari is Rasulullah and he is here today and it is by his command that we have we have come out to call the people uh, to them so mm -hmm. whoever rejects him whoever rejects us rejects the one who sent us and whoever rejects the one who sent us has rejected the greatest prophet himself <laughs> exactly there's nothing of Islam after that for them no. um, after he rules he is succeeded by uh, uh, his son in the soul world mm. and his grandson mm. from his previous incarnation and that is Imam al Hussein alayhi mm. the one who is mentioned to be the first of those who have returned and that is uh, Imam Ahmed al Hassan alayhi Imam Ahmed al Hassan alayhi whoever rejects him whoever fights against him Whoever, whoever mocks him or curses him, it is the same thing as mocking and cursing Imam al Hussein salam, not because he is a, a son of al Hussein, but because he is al Hussein, a son of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Salam. And he returns to succeed Imam al Mahdi, and he is the first of the 12 Mahdis to come. Uh, succeeding the first one uh, comes the uh, uh, the Prophet Joseph and he is the second Mahdi and mm. he appears as a successor to Imam Ahmed al-Hassan salam and his name in the will is Abdullah. The third Mahdi who appears is Musa uh, and his physical name in this incarnation is Al-Mahdi mm. and he is the, the third of the Mahdi's and his incarnation is the Prophet Moses. Moses. His soul is the soul of Moses. Moses reappears as the third of the Mahdi's. Mm. Succeeding him is the fourth Mahdi and he is the Prophet Adam. After the Prophet Adam comes his successor and mm. that is the uh, fifth Mahdi and mm. that is the Prophet Ismail. Uh, after the Prophet Ismail comes the sixth Mahdi, and that is Ibrahim alayhi salam. After Ibrahim alayhi salam comes the seventh Mahdi, and that is the Prophet Aaron alayhi salam, Harun. Uh, after Aaron comes the eighth Mahdi, and that is the reappearance of the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. After the Prophet Nuh comes the ninth Mahdi, and he is a member from the Ahl Kisa, and that is Jesus, the son of Mary. Yes. After Jesus, the son of Mary, comes his successor, and that is mm -hmm. Aliyun al Murtada. So al Murtada will be his physical name uh, in this incarnation. Mm -hmm. uh, after him is his successor, and that is Imam al Hassan, and, and his name in this incarnation is Harun al Sadiq. And after him will be his successor, and that is the 12th uh, Mahdi, and he is the reincarnation and the reappearance of Muhammad Rasulullah, and his name will in, in this incarnation uh, uh, is, uh, is hidden, but his incarnation and his title is Muhammad, the son of Al-Zahra. SubhanAllah. حقيقة يعني عند الكثير اللي ممكن واحد يعني يأخذ من هذا الوصف ولكن أحب أقول إنه أبو الصادق محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم عندما بشر بمحمد بالإمام المهدي عليه أفضل الصلاة والسلام كانت الصورة غير واضحة عند السنة أو مقتضبة بسيطة نتيجة النريش عند الشيعة كانت أكثر بس الصورة الأكمل الصورة اللي وضحتها حضرتك بالفعل الإمام المهدي هو الذي يعرف نفسه ويعطي الصورة الأكملة لفكرة الإمام المهدي سبحان الله. And so the companions of Islam, the mm. ones who started Islam, mm. they bring back Islam. So. And the prophets and the messengers, they return with them mm. to help 
um, you know, with the restoration and the implementation of a divine just state and mm -hmm. Islam in its purest form. And so there's 12,000 successors, mm. uh, but to distinguish between uh, each uh, time period, they're mm. given uh, different titles. Mm. And so just like we had the 12 Imams, mm. and then after that, they are 12 Mahdis. After the 12 Mahdis comes another 12 successors uh, from those 12,000. Mm. Uh, and uh, they are called the 12, the Hadun, mm. the 12 Hadis mm. uh, that come and guide and then after that are the 12 knights or the 12 forsan who succeed after uh, the hadis and as such every 12 has a, a title to them that distinguishes them uh, from before but all of them are imams and all of them are mahdis and all of them are hadun and all of them uh, mm -hmm. are forsan and mm -hmm. and and subhanallah هاي الصورة الصورة العظيمة للإمام المادي حقيقة ذكرتني برواية كان ذكروها ذكر أحد الأنبياء عفوا أهل البيت عليه مضل الصلاة والسلام عندما جاء رجل إليه قال له إن نصف صاحب هذا الأمر بالصفة التي ليس فيها أحد من الناس فكان رد الإمام حقيقة جدا صادم قال لا والله لا يكون ذلك حتى يكون هو الذي يحتج بكم به يحتج بذلك عليكم ويدعوكم إليه فالصورة اللي وضحتها حضرتك للإمام المهدي عليه أفضل الصلاة والسلام بالفعل تطابق مع كل روايات على بيت محمد عليه أفضل الصلاة والسلام تعطي صورة جدا رائعة عقدية منطقية لكل شخص طالب حق يؤمن بالموقف العالمي بآخر الزمان. And it's it's very exciting too because it uh, and it's the only way to kind of tie in all these different uh, narrations that you have the existence of 12 Mahdi's mm -hmm. that succeed Imam Mahdi but at the mm -hmm. same time the return of all the prophets and the messengers and the hadith that speak about the Raja mm -hmm. but at the same time that that the return of the Ahl al mm -hmm. and and that Imam al Hussein is the one who washes and and mm -hmm. uh, buries Imam al Mahdi mm -hmm. and the verse of the inheritance uh, the inheritors in the land and and all of this could have only been put together and it's part of that uh, by somebody who is a a uh, caliph from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is something that Ahmed Hassan uh, brought and revealed uh, in this day and age and and uh, we are all lucky to be here and I thank you uh, Dr. Ali for joining me in this uh, inshallah enlightening and beneficial uh, episode uh, God bless you and thank you for standing by us from the very beginning and for everything that you have uh, done for this call uh, from the very first day and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and, and your family and uh, may you have many, many returns. Shukran, shukran jazeera al-masadaq. Shukran jazeera. Anta hadrtak illa atayitni al-iman. Wa hada shay la yuqayim bi thaman nihayyan. Shukran, shukran jazeera. God bless you. Ma ma fa'ana ma qasri bi haqqak. God bless you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalamu alaikum.